Well, good morning. Buenos días y muchísimas gracias por haber venido a su primera clase de español. Espero que obtengan alguna información que sea valiosa para ustedes y que la próxima vez que se encuentren con alguna persona que habla otro idioma sea lo suficientemente bueno para saber que es algo más del idioma, es entender la cultura. And for those of you that, for whatever reason, don't speak Spanish, and for those that said, OMG, is he going to do the whole presentation in Spanish? <laughs> Let me start again by bidding you good morning and welcome you to my presentation on why you have to translate a culture, not only a language. It is a fact that we live in a small world now, and it's getting smaller. And it's not a rare occurrence anymore to interact with people from other countries and that speak other languages and that have a culture that is different than ours. Arguably, Spanish is the second most spoken uh, language in the world, only after Chinese. And Chinese is going to be number one for a long time. That's not <laughs> changing. But the second and third place are being battled by English and Spanish. However, Hindi, the official language of India, is uh, catching up really quickly. And I think that it's going to take them over in about uh, two hours or so. <laughs> But here in the United States, I can tell you for a fact that every single one of you interact, have dealings, or depend upon somebody that their first language is Spanish. And what do I mean? by translating a culture. Uh, let me talk about languages a little bit. Not all languages were created equal. And uh, to me, languages are a little, bit, a little bit like knives. You see, you have carving knives, you have chef knives, and although all of them are knives, they have a kind of specialty and they do things better in one way than the other. And uh, would you choose a carving knife to chop vegetables? I guess not. Can you chop vegetables with a carving knife? Yes. Is it the best tool for it? Absolutely not. Let me give you an example. In my household, my wife and I were both fully bilingual. But I would never dream of having an argument with my wife in English. It would be dangerous. Well. Having an argument with my wife in any language could be dangerous. <laughs> But our language of choice for arguments, discussions, uh, even any subject that would be delicate, it's English. You ask yourselves why? Well, English is a much more precise language that allows you to deal with delicate subjects in a less emotional way and with less risks of being misunderstood. Spanish, on the other hand, it's a romantic language that is full of emotions and flavors and shades. And uh, unless you are very, very, very careful and choose your words very, very, very well, you run the risk of offending, hurting, or angering somebody. That's why Spanish requires the aid of physiology. So when you're speaking in Spanish, you need to be there. And that's why Mexican businessmen have to be retrained in how to use the telephone for business. Because in Mexico and in other cultures that, that speak Spanish, the telephone is mostly used in business to make appointments. I have seen a conversation between an American businessman and a Mexican businessman deteriorate horribly because the Mexican call, you know, wants to make an appointment to talk about the deal. And the American doesn't know why, and he just wants to know why can't they do the deal over the phone. And let me tell you, they were both speaking English. What is the problem? That in the Mexican culture, we have embedded that unless you are face to face with the other person, you don't get the full meaning of the conversation. 
things have changed. And globalization has forced some of our uh, communication to change. However, if you use a carving knife to chop up vegetables, it's going to be a longer job, it's going to be a more dangerous job, and at the end, you're going to feel that it was more difficult than it actually was. Louis XIII used to say that he would speak to his politicians in English. He would speak to his lovers in French. But he would speak to his animals in Spanish. And he would go on to explain that English is a precise language, French is very romantic, but Spanish is very expressive. So much so that even animals can understand it. <laughs> language is the primary vehicle of a culture for communication. And it's inseparable from the culture and the people. And we tend to say Spanish, ah, oh yeah, it covers everybody. It doesn't. It just covers the culture that uses it. Let me give you an example. Uh, what do you think is the hardest thing to learn in another language? Any takers? Conjugating verbs. No. Another one. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Humor. Because humor is not only language based, it's culturally based. And it's full of historical issues, cultural issues, social issues, news, uh, fads, celebrities, and everything that happens within a society. Let me tell you that one point in my life, I realized that I was bilingual and bicultural when I finally understood why the chicken crossed the road. <laughs> I know that uh, this is a very vast subject, and I'm just giving you a pinhole view of it. However, language is just a tool to start learning and understanding a culture. And learning a culture is the basis of understanding and relate to their people. And a lot of businessmen are not aware of how deep the differences in cultures are. And I can prove you with one word that I can separate an audience that have different cultures, Hispanic and uh, English culture. I can say football, and both people will think about the different game. <laughs> Completely different. So, it is my job to translate cultures, not only languages. And I can only speak about my culture, a Mexican culture, and the American culture that I know. And I can only speak about English and Spanish, that are the two languages that I know. But I can only imagine the real challenges that we have with other cultures that we have no idea about. And my name is George Sanata. And as always, I welcome your comments. Thank you. <laughs>